South America had long been a fascination of mine by the time I moved into my late teen and university years. In past episodes, I talked about this with the jungle across the street while I was very young in Panama. Later, I would often hear of South America's survival stories, lost cities, and ancient cultures. There was so much mystery and mystique around it that I had to take an extensive visit. This episode is about my last influences outside of my university studies before the actual visit. When Indiana Jones showed up in South America in the 1981 film Raiders of the Lost Ark, it was information overload for my intrigue with the southern half of the Americas. The opening scene of the five Indiana Jones films and TV series was in an early temple of the Chachapoya culture in the cloud forest of northern Peru, a lower elevation of the Andes Mountains, not so far from where I would explore many years later. These opening scenes are similar to descriptions from the lone survivor of explorations of the Inca tunnels in the mazes, booby traps, flying daggers triggered by movement, and other horrors. Although I have to admit, I haven't seen any academic accounts of these Inca tunnels, but it still helps bring to mind how little we do know. During this time, I read Hiram Bingham's book, Lost City of the Incas, published in 1948. Hiram Bingham III was an American professor in history and political science at Princeton, Yale, and Harvard, later becoming governor and a U.S. senator. He is credited with the rediscovery of Machu Picchu in the high jungle of an Amazon river source. Locals knew of it, and possibly a couple of missionaries. Hiram brought it to world fame, though misidentifying its purpose. He did this in 1911. Some believe Indiana Jones is based on Hiram Bingham's life. Others believe it was more Percy Fawcett who influenced the creation of the character. I will shortly talk about Percy, but regardless of who was the main influence, South America strongly contributed to the creation of the Indiana Jones character. I either read or became aware of quite a number of pseudoscience stories of South America. A couple of these writers I would bump into as I was making my way across South America. Some of their stories may be true, others are certainly false. What is interesting to me is the volume of these types of stories, which all contribute to the legend of South America. I would read about Che Guevara's adventures. These were later published in the Motorcycle Diaries, then made into a film. He was a revolutionary from Argentina who would help Fidel Castro overthrow Cuba. In 1965, he left Cuba to travel the globe assisting other governments. He was executed in 1967 in Bolivia after being captured by the CIA. In 1950, he would ride around Argentina, 2,800 miles or 4,500 kilometers, in the interest of understanding it. His second trip was 5,000 miles or 8,000 kilometers around South America. He took a year off from school before receiving his medical degree and would, for some time, volunteer at a leper colony on the Amazon River. He saw a lot of extreme poverty and without money wasn't able to help these people. He then thought being a doctor was not the way to help people. Instead, it had to be done through politics. He then did travels throughout Central America. 
While there, he saw the U.S. political manipulation of the region to the detriment of the local people and instead to the benefit of U.S. corporations, particularly United Fruit. This ultimately turned him against capitalism, feeling that capitalism was not for the common man. He was a saint at times, and an overly violent, seemingly conflicted individual at other times. I have run into other revolutionaries on my trips, some I stayed away from after a brief conversation, as I was sure they were going to be assassinated by their government. Che to this day is seen as a hero throughout a lot of Latin America. Several years ago, I was walking along the border of Mexico. I saw a large painting on a concrete border barrier of Che Guevara on the Mexican side facing the United States. This was the equivalent of sticking one's middle finger up at the U.S. U.S. President Teddy Roosevelt was probably the most adventurous U.S. President. His greatest adventure was deep into uncharted territory, the River of Doubt, or its Portuguese name, Rio da Vida, in the year 1914. This is a tributary of the Amazon far into the jungles of Brazil. Roosevelt still had a bullet in his chest from an attempted assassination during his third term campaign for U.S. President, which he was defeated. His expedition took a steamship to an obscure location, then from there hiked two months through the jungle with a great loss of their pack animals. Many of those on the expedition were unable to continue due to tropical illnesses. The only Westerners were then Teddy, his son, and an American naturalist. The three became deeply sick. Each morning, it was thought Teddy would not make it until the end of the day. Each evening, it was thought he would not make it until the morning. After overcoming endless struggles, they charted 1,500 kilometers or 1,000 miles of uncharted territory. There was Percy Fawcett, a military and Secret Service British officer who made seven different expeditions into South America between 1906 and 1924. He became obsessed with the lost city of Z in the Amazon. A manuscript had been created back in the mid-1700s about the place. Percy thought the city still existed. He disappeared in 1925 searching for it. A large number of people lost their lives searching for him. There were other lost city stories in the Amazon, such as El Dorado. In 2009, a book, The Lost City of Z, was written, and in 2016, a film was created. Percy was never found. These cities were thought to be exceptional in their development. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, creator of the Sherlock Holmes series, wrote the fictional book Lost World in 1912, a world in South America in which dinosaurs still existed. Such a story chose South America because to most of the potential readers, it is the place in the world in which such things like this could happen. It has the greatest of unknown areas. These have all contributed to the legend of South America. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and like as YouTube sends it on to others based on this. Have an amazing day and see you in the next episode.